Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created with Phaser 3. In our last video, we continued working on our basic layout for our battle scene, and we added in our health bar components and the UI to show the monster's name as well as their uh, level and some other metadata. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the completed source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. All right, so before we start adding in the rest of our UI components, let's do a quick refactor. Uh, so in our last video, we created a new method called create health, and we're just gonna update this to be create health bar. Uh, just it's a little more explicit of what we're doing. Uh, so we're just gonna update the references in our code. Perfect. All right, so for our UI, what we're going to work on is we're gonna add in our menu bars down here. And so we're gonna have two. We're gonna have our main info pane, uh, which will be used for displaying text for like when a monster attacks, uh, when uh, the player takes damage, uh, when it's prompting the user to select something. That's gonna be displayed in the main area here. And then we're gonna have a sub info pane, which will be how the player will interact with the game in the battle scene. So it's like where they're going to select if they want to do an attack, if they want to run away, use items, and things like that. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make use of a new game object type we've not used before. Uh, this is gonna be to be a rectangle. And so uh, before we dive into that, what we'll do is we're just gonna make two new methods for these new uh, info panes. Uh, so we'll do create main info pane and we will do create main info sub pane and then what we'll do is we'll come into our create method real quick and at the bottom we will go ahead and call our new method and we're just going to go ahead and add in a quick comment so we're going to render out the main info and sub info panes all right, so what we'll do is we'll come down to create main info pane. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this.add and we're going to do rectangle. And so what this method does, it's a factory for creating a basic rectangle game object. And the rectangle game object is a basic phaser 3 game object um, that can be added to any scene, group, or container, just like the other game objects. Uh, but it's a nice wrapper for uh, drawing rectangle shapes, these basic shapes, without having to provide your own uh, images or textures uh, for this uh, object. Uh, so since it's a phaser 3 game object, we can uh, use the uh, various uh, attributes like the XY positioning, your width and height, and then like your fill color, your fill alpha. And so it's just a, like I said, it's just a nice wrapper method uh, to create this basic shape. All right, so then, uh, so for our first two arguments, we need to specify our X and Y position of where we want our rectangle to be placed. Um, so for our rectangle, we're going to want to position this uh, for our X coordinate of zero. So it's right here at the border. But for our Y position, we want to come all the way down here and start a rectangle up here in the top corner. So when we draw our rectangles, uh, basically you specify your top left corner um, for your position, and then Phaser's going to draw the rectangle starting from there. So it's going to start here and then draw based on the width and height that we specify. So to figure out our coordinate, what we're going to do is we need to determine how big we want a rectangle to be. And so we're going to want our rectangle height to be 124 pixels. And so, since we know that value, we can go ahead and dynamically calculate our y value. So what we'll do is we'll take this dot scale dot height, and we're gonna subtract our rectangle height. So then this will give us our y position here. So then next, what we need to do is we need to specify our width and our height of our rectangle. And so we want our width of our rectangle to take up the full uh, scene here. So we're going to do this dot scale dot width. And then we need to specify our height. So this will be our rectangle height. And now we can specify our fill color. Uh, so we this is how we can control the color of the rectangle that'll be drawn. So we're going to do 0x EDE 4F3. And then you can specify your fill alpha. Uh, so a number between zero and one, uh, we're gonna go ahead and set this to one. So then that way our rectangles uh, fully colored in. But if we did something like 0 0.2, it'd make it more transparent. 
All right, so similar to other game objects, our origin is in the middle of our game object. So what we'll do is we're just going to update our game origin. So we're going to do set origin. We'll set it to zero, so it goes to the top left corner. All right, now we have our rectangle. So it looks like our height is a little bit off. So what we'll do is we're just going to bump this to 128. And we're still missing some. We'll do 132. All right, much better. All right, so next what we want to do for our rectangle is we can use a method called set stroke style, and that will allow us to provide a border uh, that'll be drawn to our rectangle. So what we can do is if we call that method, we'll see that set stroke style um, expects the width, so how wide this border will be. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do eight pixels, uh, so it's a little bit thicker. Uh, then you can specify the color that you want the um, border to be all right and then so for our color what we want to do is 0 x e 4 4 3 4 a and we'll do one we'll go ahead and save all right so when we set the stroke for our rectangle when phaser draws it it includes some of that uh in the positioning so when it goes to draw a rectangle so that's why we have some of our stroke being drawn off the canvas here and on the uh, right hand corner as well so if we want to show our whole border we actually need to update our positioning uh, for our rectangle so what we want to do is we're going to add like a padding uh, to account for this so what we'll do is we're just going to make a new variable we are do const padding we'll set this equal to four and so because now we have this uh, border uh, that we're going to have eight pixels, what we want to do is we're going to need to take that away from that padding from both sides here. So what we'll do is instead of being 132, this is going to be 124. And now we need to update our positioning to also account for that padding. So for our width of the rectangle itself, we want to go ahead and subtract our padding. So that way it's not included. And then to fix our width, we need to do the same thing, but then multiply by two. All right, and then we just need to update our X position. Uh, so that way we include that padding. Uh, so it won't be zero, but it'll use our padding value. All right, much better. All right, so now that we have our main panel, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do our sub panel. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll come to our create method. We're going to go ahead and call our new method. So we'll do this dot create main info subpane and then what we'll do in our method we're just going to go ahead and copy this code here and we're going to place it down here and then what we'll do is we're going to actually set our rectangle width because we for our our sub info pane we don't need the full width of our uh screen here so we're going to do rectangle width and we're going to go ahead and do 500 pixels uh we'll keep the same height and then when we add our rectangle, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do zero, zero. And then we're going to use our rectangle uh, width and then our rectangle height variables. So then what we'll do is we're gonna update the border color uh, for our sub info pane. Uh, so instead of red, it's gonna be more bluish. So we'll do zero X, nine, zero, five, AC two. All right, so now we just need to position our sub info pane to be over on our main info pane here. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create a container to house our sub info pane uh, because we'll use that container to also include the options that we're displaying. And then that way we can just hide the container itself and we don't have to hide each game object individually. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to our create method and we're gonna go ahead and do We'll add in our group our container here. So we'll do this dot add dot container. And now we need to specify our X, Y position for our container game object. So what we'll do is we're gonna do 520 pixels and we will do 448 pixels. All right, and then what we'll do is we're gonna add in our sub info pane as our child game object of this container. Uh, so for this, to do that, we actually need to go ahead and return our rectangle uh, that we created here. So what we'll do is we'll do return this dot add. All right, perfect. All right, so the last thing we need to do for our menus is we actually need to add in the text uh, for the options the player will be able to choose. So to do that, what we'll do is we're gonna come to the top of our file 
we're going to make a new uh, enum. Uh, so what we'll do is we're going to make a new object. We'll do battle menu options. And we're going to set this to object.freeze. And inside here, uh, this will add in our options. Uh, so the first one's going to be fight. Then we'll have switch. Uh, so this will be allowing a player to switch to another monster. We will have item. Uh, so if the player wants to use something from their bag. And then we'll have flee. Uh, so that way if the player wants to run away from the battle. And then what we're going to do is we will come down to our create method and we'll go to our new container that we created uh, for our sub info pane. And so inside here, this is where we're going to create our text game objects uh, for the options that will be available to the player. So to do that, we're going to do this.add.text. And now we need to specify our X and Y positioning uh, of this text. Uh, so for our first one, we're going to do 55 pixels by 22. And then we'll do in our battle menu options. And our first option will be fight. And then we need to apply our styling uh, that we want for our text game object. So what we'll do is we'll save. We'll see our text game object is added. Uh, it's a little bit small and we can't see it. So for our text, uh, what we'll do is we'll use the color black. Uh, so we'll do color, we're going to do black, and then what we'll do is we'll also update the size. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do font size, and let's do 30 pixels. All right, much better. Uh, so for our menu options here, we're going to want to use the same styling for each one. So what we'll do is we're going to copy this, and we're going to place it into a new variable so that we can reference it from one spot. Uh, so we're just going to do battle UI text style. And then what we'll do is we'll come to the top of our file. We'll add in that new variable. So we'll do const battle UI textile. That's going to equal the object um, that we, uh, with our properties. So now we just need to add in our three other options. So we're going to copy this block here. We're going to paste it a few times. And then let's go ahead and update our positioning. So for our second option, the top row, we'll do 240 pixels. And then we'll use that for our bottom row as well. And then for our Y position, We'll do 70, and we'll do 70. All right, so now we just need to actually update the text. So we're going to have switch, then item, then flee. All right, so now that we have the text for our submenu uh, shown here, we just need to add the main text for our text here so we have something in our main info pane. So what we'll do is... We're going to come below here and we're going to add in a new container uh, to house our attacks here. Because uh, what we want to do is when the battle first starts, we'll have some informational attacks like this monster appeared. Um, and then after the player chooses fight, then we would actually display the attack options that are available to our player. Um, so we want to be able to hide these uh, similar to like our main sub pane here. Uh, we'll want to put them in a container so we can hide them all together. So what we'll do is we'll do this.add.container. So now we specify our positioning. Uh, so we'll do 0 for x coordinate. And we're going to do 448 pixels. Uh, so that way it's lined up with our other container here. And now we can add in any child game objects that we uh, want to add. Uh, so what we'll do is we're just going to copy this line of code here. We're going to paste it here. And then we're going to do 5522. We'll change our text. Uh, for the time being, we're just going to hard code this. We'll do slash, and we'll keep the same uh, UI text style. All right, and so in our game, uh, so typically uh, the monsters would have four moves they can choose from. Uh, so what we'll do is we're just going to copy this line of code here, and we'll paste it three more times, and we're just going to mimic uh, what we did for our subpanel here. Uh, so we're going to do 55, we'll do 240. And we'll do 240, and we'll do the same uh, Y positioning. So then that way everything is aligned. Uh, so we'll, we'll do slash. Let's do growl. And then uh, we'll just say because it's a starter, we only have two moves. So we're just going to put in some placeholders. Perfect. 
All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. Uh, in our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to work on refactoring um, our menus here into its own component. Uh, so then that way you start adding in like our dialogue pieces. So we'll say like this monster appeared. And then once that goes away, we display the menu with the options. Um, and so we're just going to refactor to make it into its own component. Uh, so as a reminder, there is a link in the description of this video to the complete source code for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in this series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see some of the links on your screen now.